The recent crisis of the Silicon Valley Bank has been all over the news. The stock lost over 60% of its value in a single day, and people are now asking if the fall of one big bank can lead to the fall of other banks and a financial crisis like the one in 2008. But before we can discuss that, we need to understand what the Silicon Valley Bank does and what went wrong. The Silicon Valley Bank is one of the largest banks related to venture capital and private equity firms. They give loans to these firms, who in turn invest in startups. They also directly give loans to startups and keep their money in current accounts. As of December 31, 2022, the total asset size of the bank was $711,093 million. Out of this, $73,614 million were loans given, with $41,269 million given to venture capital and private equity firms. One of the big figures we need to focus on is the $91,000 million in securities held to maturity. These are long-term securities, such as investments in U.S. bonds. The problem arises when we consider where the bank got the money from to invest in these securities. A lot of deposits flow into the bank, and the non-interest-bearing demand deposits taken in by the bank is one source of such deposits. These deposits are similar to savings accounts in India. Now, the problem arises when we look at the balance sheet of the Silicon Valley Bank. As of December 31, 2022, the bank's total liabilities were $637,678 million. Out of this, $443,442 million were deposits taken by the bank, with $405,660 million being non-interest-bearing demand deposits. This means that the bank has invested heavily in long-term securities with short-term deposits, and this is a dangerous position for any bank to be in. Short-term deposits can be withdrawn at any time, but long-term securities cannot be sold quickly. If a bank faces a sudden withdrawal of deposits, it can be forced to sell securities at a loss, leading to a collapse of the bank. The situation becomes even more precarious when we consider the quality of the loans given by the bank. The bank has given out loans to startups, many of whom are yet to make any profits. This means that the loans given by the bank are risky, and if any of these loans turn bad, it can lead to a collapse of the bank. So, what went wrong with the Silicon Valley Bank? The bank invested heavily in long-term securities with short-term deposits, and it gave out risky loans to startups. This is a dangerous position for any bank to be in, and it was only a matter of time before things went wrong. What could happen next? The fall of the Silicon Valley Bank could lead to the fall of other banks, and it could trigger a financial crisis. To ensure confidence in the banking system and markets, authorities are taking swift action. Customers will be repaid through a special assessment on banks, not by taxpayers, starting on Monday. The government is doing what it can to prevent a run on smaller regional banks and to ensure there is stability in the banking system. The situation has also led to urgent calls for the government to step in as fears mounted that employers who banked with Silicon Valley Bank would not be able to pay their workers. With millions of employees at risk of missing their paychecks, the stakes are high. President Joe Biden has put out a statement calling for the people responsible for this mess to be held accountable, and for stronger oversight and regulation of larger banks to prevent similar incidents from happening in the future. In a related development, federal officials are also putting similar measures in place for a second bank, Signature Bank, which is a major player in the world of cryptocurrency. This underscores the need for greater regulation and oversight of banks, especially those that handle emerging technologies like cryptocurrency. Overall, the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank is a sobering reminder of the importance of a stable and resilient banking system. It is also a call to action for regulators and lawmakers to take a closer look at the banking industry and to ensure that it is safe, secure, and able to weather future storms. As the situation develops, Federal officials will be closely monitoring for any signs of stability and working to restore confidence in the banking system and markets. Don't forget to comment below and share your thoughts on the video. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel for more life-changing content. Thank you for watching.